Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center series, Our National Parks. Today we're going to Yosemite, another great park that we can actually drive to from California because all the parks are close enough. So Yosemite has a bunch of really think, cool things going on. It's a giant caldera, which means the whole thing is all bubbling with lava and hot water behind it. That's why we have the Old Faithful goes off all the time. Let's take a look at some pictures of this beautiful park. Most of it is in Wyoming. But there's a little bit of it that creeps into Montana and a little bit of it that creeps into Idaho. It's a really huge park. It was also the very first national park to be declared a national park in our country. In fact, some people think that it's the first park anywhere in the world to be made a national park because the features are so unique. Let's take a look at Old Faithful. Now, this is a geyser. This is how the earth releases its pressure when there's all kinds of hot lava stuff going on below. And every 44 seconds, give or take, it explodes. That's why they call it Old Faithful, because you can count on it going off. Another unique feature is this really cool springs, but it's super hot and you don't want to go in it. The different microorganisms give it this rainbow look. It's called the Great Prisma Spring, but you have to stay far away from it and stay on the trails. Another thing that the park is known for is all this wildlife. So we're just going to highlight the buffalo today. I'm sorry, it's a bison, but they kind of look a little alike. So here's a bison. I'm going to show you a really easy way of making a bison. Now look at that rainbow right by our geyser. You could throw a rainbow in this drawing if you wanted to, too. That's probably the water mist that's making that rainbow because it doesn't look like it's raining out. And here's one last picture of Old Faithful. So you can play around with the sun, the color of the sky on your picture, but we've got some great inspiration to work off of today. Let's start. Let's take a look at our picture first. So here is my landscape. Remember, a landscape is any picture of outside your window, anything outside. Horizon line, do you see? On this particular artwork, I used magic markers and watercolor. And this is our rainbow spring. It was going to be kind of hard to do with paint, so I did it with the marker. Now, I know that that bison looks very intimidating, but I have a very easy formula how anybody can learn how to draw a bison. And I wanted to use tissue paper, but I wasn't sure you guys would have tissue paper, but I knew one thing you had, you had some toilet paper. I could count on that. So my geyser, just to add a nice little 3D, I used toilet paper for my geyser shooting up. It looks, goes a little bit above the picture frame. So this is the fun drawing we're gonna do today. All right, now remember I'm always telling you guys, your horizon line is the first thing you draw. It's mountains and they're different. Look, no two are alike, just like you guys, no two are alike. Now I'm gonna draw this flat line. This tells me this is flat and above this line is where you have to start hiking up a hill. I'm going to put in a really quick little where their geyser goes off here. Here's where Old Faithful is. A little bit of a mound, like a pitcher's mound, and then it comes down like this. I'm gonna rough in real quick where our rainbow spring is going. Gonna go right about there. Now I'm gonna draw my bison. Now, I'm telling you, it's easier than you think. Think of the pear shape, and we're gonna put a pear on the side. So I'm putting a pear. See if I put a little pear thing on that? See how it kinda looks like it's a pear that someone's knocked over? So here's my pear shape. This is the body of the buffalo. Now his head is a rounded off and quite large triangle, upside down triangle. You see that? Pear, triangle. Put in a little, couple of buffalo horns in here. They got giant muzzles. That kind of serves as his nose, his nostrils, and his mouth. Eyes are really on the side of his head. Now a buffalo's legs are really, really, really huge. So, and they're super, super furry. So he's right on the edge here probably should have lifted my buffalo up a little bit, but there he is. His legs are super, super, front legs are really, really furry and fat. His back legs, remember how I'm always talking about animals have backward knees for their back legs? That's a buffalo's knee. His back legs are a lot skinnier. Here's one of his back legs, and here's the other one of his back legs, and here's his little tail coming out. See? Pair, triangle, fat legs. That's all there is to our friend. Okay, this is all we really need so far. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do my marker.
I just want to suggest some trees along this, this line here. So I'm just going to quickly suggest pine trees. There's a lot of pine trees in Yellowstone. Now I'm going to do my rainbow blue. Got to do them in the right order. Green. Yellow. It changes color too, depending on the season. Sometimes the warmer colors, the oranges and the reds are more vivid. Sometimes the cooler colors are. Okay, here's, we got one more color on our rainbow. We'll have to stay away from our bison. Okay. Bisons are furry, so I want to make the line sketchy so it kind of looks a little furry. Time to paint. When you are painting, please always remember to keep your paints on the side that you're left-handed, so my paints are on the left side. I'm gonna start with the sky. Now, I'm not, I don't have white paint I have, but it's not really good. So you're gonna see how I'm gonna put my clouds in my sky by letting the white paper be the clouds. Skies are typically darker blue at the top and lighter at the bottom. Look at my brush. It's going back and forth in one movement, right? You see some of the white that I'm leaving behind? Those are going to be my clouds. I want it a little bit lighter at the bottom. And a little bit darker at the top. I'm going to make purple. Instead of using blue and red, I get a better purple when I use blue and this magenta. But blue and red work, and that's all you got. You guys see how loose my brush is? I'm going to get a little bit of green going on for my trees. Just filling in some of the spots. The water makes the magic marker dissolve a little bit too. Now I need to make this unusual color that's kind of like a brownie green. So I'm using green. I'm using some yellow, and surprise, I'm using a little bit of orange to make this unique color. Here's my unique color. The brown makes it look like army green in a way. Okay. Now to separate this off, I'm going to make this more of a yellowy color. touch of the orange. See the difference? Ooh, got a yellow in that one. Okay, now while the paint is still wet, I can grab some green for the grass that our buffalo is eating. Look at that brush. Look how fast it's moving. It's just bouncing around like it's having the time of its life. Now remember what I said about brown. I pre personally prefer the blue and orange version of how to make a brown. 
but there are other ways to make brown. This way the marker allows some of the detail to be shown. Populations of bisons are returning back to normal now, which is a very good thing. We're gonna put a little bit of black in there. Shadow under the belly, under his neck, both side that leg, there you go. All right, now the last thing to go on is our geyser. So you're going to have to just excuse me while I run to the restroom and get some toilet paper. Just measure it first. All right, well the last bit of our pitcher is going to be our geyser. I took a piece of toilet paper, I'm kind of squishing it like that and it's gonna go right there. It can even come off the paper a little bit. Now, depending on what kind of glue you're using, I put it on this way. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. Go all the way up to the top. There you go. Okay, now our geyser is complete. Well, that was our trip to Yosemite. And now we have this lovely picture of Old Faithful and our bison and our beautiful rainbow hot springs. So if you can't go to Yosemite, at least you can paint a picture of Yosemite. But like I said, a lot of these spots are really close to where we are. I hope you get a chance to see it. Thanks for joining us today at the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center, Journey Through Our National Parks. We'll see you again. Thank you.